Okay, so first of all, imagine that uh, we uh, found a way to stabilize a population at a significantly lower level um, through appropriate um, uh, governmental policies. Um, uh, we found a way to limit global population to 10 billion rather than 11 billion. How does that change things? Well, we can see uh, we've lowered our carbon emissions, our projected carbon emissions. Um, the CO2 concentration at 2100 is now um, a little bit above 650 parts per million, so we've knocked off about 50 parts per million of our projected CO2 increase by uh, 2100. Um, would uh, be uh, very difficult to um, uh, decrease uh, the uh, projected global population much more than that. Uh, but let's say we go for 9, mil, uh, nine billion, um, then uh, we've um, now uh, lowered uh, the 2100 uh, CO2 concentration to below 650 parts per million. So we're slowly working our way towards a 550 stabilization. Let's imagine that we um, uh, were able to uh, increase uh, energy efficiency more than is currently projected through new technologies that have not yet been uh, incorporated or implemented, uh, perhaps um, large-scale uh, use of uh, fusion um, energy. Um, so let's imagine that the energy intensity, that we can get a better uh, improvement in energy intensity, something closer to 1.5% um, uh, decline uh, versus a 1% decline in the amount of energy um, that uh, we need uh, per unit dollar. Well, now uh, we have uh, lowered uh, CO2 concentrations uh, even more. Uh, we're a little bit above 550 parts per million. Um, now, of course, if we uh, were to establish um, policies uh, that favored non-carbon-based forms of energy, renewable energy um, technology, um, then we can, of course, uh, further improve our carbon efficiency. And so we might imagine um, changing this number from minus 0.3% uh, uh, to maybe minus 0.6% uh, or so. If through the introduction of appropriate policies. Um, and uh, now uh, we have uh, come very close to a 550 ppm stabilization. So we would have to go in um, and look more uh, in more detail at the assumptions that go into assuming that we can change uh, carbon efficiency by the amount that we've changed it or that we can uh, change energy intensity by the amount that we've changed it. If we, for example, uh, look at how we now are comparing with the historical trajectories, we can see that um, our energy intensity curve is far more optimistic than would be suggested by even the past two decades, which um, we originally uh, used to extrapolate the future trend somewhat op optimistically. Um, if we look at carbon efficiency, then to uh, decrease our reliance on uh, carbon-based energy um, by the amount assumed in the carbon efficiency number we've used, again, we would need to start doing significantly uh, better in terms of that uh, decline in use of carbon-based energy than we have done in even the past decade or two. Uh, so clearly, um, changes in policy, changes in behavior, uh, somewhat dramatic changes in policy and behavior would be necessary to put us on the trajectories that um, are in essence um, uh, dependent on uh, these uh, optimistic uh, numbers we've now uh, used to replace the so-called business as usual settings in our attempt to uh, lower CO2 uh, future CO2 emissions and uh, future CO2 concentrations. We can see, uh, for example, that um, to follow uh, this 550 ppm, we've come pretty close now to 550 ppm stabilization. Uh, we're a little bit above the 550 ppm stabilization, but not too far above.